everybody and welcome back to another Know Your Ship episode. And I know it's been a very long time since I've made another one of these, so here it is. Uh, today's episode is going to be on the Royal Netherlands Navy light cruiser, the De Reuter. The De Reuter was designed in the early 1930s, at a time of a global economic depression. So this poor economic state, as well as a growing pacifist movement in the Netherlands, made it very, very difficult for new naval ships to be built. However, the Netherlands needed a third cruiser in order to maintain at least two operational cruisers in the Netherlands East Indies in case one was out for overhauls or maintenance or things like that. Still, the economic and societal factors contributed to a substantial amount of restrictions on the De Reuter. In fact, at first she was only supposed to display something like 5,000 tons and carry six main guns. However, this initial design met with ferocious resistance from the Navy, and the design was somewhat improved. The De Reuter was finally ordered in August of 1932 and laid down on September the 16th of 1933. She would display 6,442 tons standard and 7,822 tons fully loaded. She was 170.8 meters long, had a beam of 15.7 meters, and a draft of 5.1 meters. The De Reuter had six Yarrow boilers and three Parsons geared steam turbines, which allowed her to produce 66,000 shaft horsepower on two shafts. For short sure periods of time, however, she could manage to output as much as 75,000 shaft horsepower. She was designed to do a maximum of 32 knots, but on trials, she managed to output 68,910 shaft horsepower, which pushed her to 33.56 knots. She had a range of 6,800 nautical miles at 12 knots. Now, while I was researching the ship, one of the most common comments I tended to see was that in an effort to save cost, the ship was very lightly armored. The De Reuter had 33 millimeters of deck armor, between 30 and 51 millimeters of belt armor, 33 millimeters of armor for the conning tower, and her turret armor was 100 millimeters on the front and 33 millimeters on the sides. A lot of the comparisons compared the De Reuter's armor to the Omaha class light cruiser armor, which had 76 millimeters of belt armor, and you know, that caused a lot of the, uh, the De Reuter was poorly armored comments. However, I actually don't think the De Reuter was all that poorly armored. If you look at the light cruisers of other nations at the time, you'll see that the armor values are actually somewhat comparable. The German Konigsberg class, for example, had a 50mm belt and a 40mm deck. The Italian Giosano class had even lighter armor with only 20mm on the deck and 24mm on the belt. It is interesting to note that in Norman Friedman's book on British cruisers, he mentions that in order to defeat 76 millimeters of side armor and 25 millimeters of deck armor at 20,000 yards, you needed a gun that was 234 millimeters in size. And that gun could actually do it at 22,000 yards. A 152 millimeter gun, which is more commonly seen on light cruisers, had to get within 14,000 yards in order to defeat this kind of protection and a 140mm gun needed 12,000 yards, so it had to get even closer. This suggests that the De Reuter, with its 33mm of deck armor, was actually reasonably well protected from light cruiser armaments at range. So the idea for the ship probably would have been to stay further away and engage uh, other light cruisers. In the event that it runs up against destroyers with lighter guns, its armor should have been sufficient against them. Furthermore, there's one other interesting thing about it is that while the De Reuter's actual armament was rather light, her fire control system of the Hayes-Meyer type was actually considered one of the very, very best in the world and would provide rather accurate fire out to range. So potentially, this was the thinking behind you know, making the ship slightly lighter armor but giving superior fire control. The De Reuter's biggest weakness lay in its actual main armament. It was only equipped with seven 150mm Bofors guns in three dual and one single turret. Comparatively speaking, other light cruisers at the time often had slightly bigger guns and more of them. The Bofors guns on the De Reuter had a muzzle velocity of 2,953 feet or 900 meters a second and could manage 23,200 yards at 29 degrees or 30,000 yards at 45 degrees. The guns had an elevation between negative 10 and 60 degrees. 
Rate of fire was good between 5 to 6 rounds a minute. The DeRoyter also carried 10 40mm Bofors AA and 850 caliber machine guns. No torpedoes were carried on the DeRoyter. While her armament was rather light, like I mentioned earlier, the fire control is of that rather sophisticated variety that provided excellent fire control. These systems, one for the main guns and one for the anti-aircraft guns, were gyro-stabilized fire control systems, which allowed the De Reuter to fire accurately in all conditions. Finally, the De Reuter was equipped with two Fokker C-11W float planes for reconnaissance duties. The De Reuter's wartime career was short and tragic. In December of 1941, after the attacks on Pearl Harbor, the American, British, Dutch, Australian, or ABDA command, was established. However, putting so many different forces with differing objectives together without sufficient resources was bound to lead to disaster. The ABDA's naval assets were placed under the command of the Dutch Rear Admiral Carl Dorman. In January of 1942, the De Reuter was involved primarily with escorting Singapore-bound convoys. From February the 3rd to the 4th, a striking force comprised of the Dutch vessels the De Reuter, the Trump, the U.S. cruisers Houston and Marblehead and seven destroyers leave the Gili Islands to intercept an enemy convoy heading for Makassar. However, later on the same day, the striking force is spotted by Japanese aircraft and comes under attack from around 27 Betty bombers. These aircraft were further reinforced by nine older nail bombers. During the air attack, the De Reuter shoots down a Japanese aircraft with a 40mm guns. However, the USS Houston during this particular battle is hit in one of her turrets and has one of her turrets knocked out, and this will be a little bit more significant later on. The first significant naval action, however, takes place between February the 18th to the 20th. On the 18th, the battalion from the Imperial Japanese Army's 48th Infantry Division landed on Bali. The capture of Bali would grant the Japanese an airbase within range of the ABDA naval base at Surabaya. Rear Admiral Dorman sent all available ships to attack the Japanese. On paper, the ABDA naval forces were numerically superior, having three cruisers, seven destroyers, and two submarines, up against only four destroyers of the Imperial Japanese Navy. However, poor coordination and the failure to concentrate forces would prove costly. The De Reuter arrived as part of the first Allied group of ships, comprising the De Reuter and the cruiser Java, as well as the destroyers USS John D. Ford, Pope, and the Dutch destroyer Piet Hein. The cruisers opened fire first at around 22-25 hours on the 19th of February, but scored no hits. The cruisers eventually would move away to open the way for the destroyers to engage with torpedoes. At 22.40 hours, a long lance torpedo fired from one of the Japanese destroyers hit the Dutch destroyer Piet Hein, and it sank quickly. The two Dutch cruisers retired to the northeast and would not engage in any further combat. Other ships that came later also managed to do very little, with another Dutch cruiser, the Trump, taking heavy damage and having to depart for Australia for repairs. The Japanese managed to win a very convincing battle against a numerically superior enemy. Around the 27th of February 1942, the Japanese began concentrating forces to attack Java. Rear Admiral Dorman took his ships, consisting of the light cruisers De Reuter, Java, HMAS Perth, the heavy cruisers HMS Exeter, veteran of the Graf Spee engagement, the USS Houston, the one with the destroyed turret from an earlier air attack, and nine destroyers into the fray. They ran into a superior Japanese naval force under the command of Rear Admiral Takeo Takagi, comprising the heavy cruisers Nachi Haguro and the light cruisers Naka and Jinsu, and 14 destroyers. The Japanese task force had substantially greater firepower than the ABDA fleet, as each heavy cruiser on the Japanese side had 10 203mm guns, while the HMS Exeter only had 6, and the USS Houston, which had one turret knocked out, only had 6 as well. This provided the Japanese task force with a big edge when it came to heavy artillery, never mind mentioning the already superior advantage the Japanese had over the Allies when it came to their torpedoes. The ABDA ships repeatedly tried to reach and attack the invasion convoy, but was constantly repulsed by the Japanese escorts with heavy losses. As the day went on, more and more ships were lost or forced to retreat, and by 2300 hours that evening, Rear Admiral Dorman had only four cruisers under his command. They were unfortunate enough to run into a Japanese escort group again, and were once again engaged. Superior Japanese night fighting abilities, along with their lethal torpedoes, led to the loss of both the Java and the De Reuter. From both of these Dutch cruisers, only 111 men were saved. Rear Admiral Dorman went down with the De Reuter. The Perth and Houston escaped this night engagement only to be sunk the next day. 
HMS Exeter, which retreated from the initial battle on the 27th, was sunk a few days later on March the 1st. The loss of two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and numerous destroyers, as well as the loss of over 3,300 men, eliminated what remained of Allied naval resistance in Southeast Asia in the early stages of 1942. And only in June, during the Battle of Midway, would the fortunes start to reverse. And that's all, folks, for this Know Your Ship episode on the De Reuter light cruiser. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do like this episode. And if you want to see more, don't forget to sub. Aside from all that, I hope you all have a great one. And I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again soon.